from Hollywood, it's time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. Dr. Colby calling back, Johnny. Oh, yeah, Frank. How am I? Oh, you've fallen behind. You'll need boosters for diphtheria and smallpox, typhoid, cholera. And if we can find room, why, we'll bring you up to date on your tetanus. Oh. Well, where do I get them? We'll have it all right here in the office. Or I can stop by on my way home. Well, that's not what I mean, Frank. It takes a long time to get to Haiti. And those plane seats aren't very comfortable at best. <laughs> Edmund O'Brien, in another transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office America Federated Life Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Attention, Harvard Huntington, General Manager. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my assignment in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Expense account item one, $15 for a pair of tickets to Detective Story at the Hudson Theater in New York, which I never got a chance to use since I was seated in the library of your Hartford home promptly at curtain time. Dollar, I want to thank you for coming out here. Sorry to break into your evening like this, but since I have, I'll get right to the point. Uh, perhaps you've heard of the Gordon family here in Hartford. Well, what I see of the society page is while I'm flipping back to the sports section, but I've noticed the name. Diamond studded, aren't they? Immensely wealthy. Pillars of society. And surprisingly, quite a proper family. Uh, that is all but one of the sons, Ralph. A heavy drinker, complete wastrel, ne'er do well. Oh, a blot on the old escutcheon. Eh? Yes, continually getting into one scrape or another. Now he's done it again. I take it that you're not worried about Ralph the man, but about Ralph the policyholder, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> well, to put it bluntly, yes. Uh, I don't think it's unethical for a company to protect its interests. In this case, the policy is in the amount of $150,000. Quite a piece of paper. Yes. And to be quite candid, I rue the day it was issued. But the point is this. Ralph Gordon, at last report, is dying. Aboard his yacht at Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Well, then you don't need me. You need the Mayo Clinic. Uh, Dollar, I hesitate to even mention this in the presence of a sane man. But from everything we can learn, young Gordon is not dying from any known malady. He's dying as a result... Oh, it's pure nonsense. He, he's supposed to be dying as the result of voodoo curse. Now, anybody with any sense... All right, sense all right, wait a minute. Where'd you get your information? Uh, from his older brother, Thomas. He's a doctor... He's down there in Haiti with Ralph. Now, I want you to go down and debunk this thing, Dollar. Find out what's wrong. Why, any sane man knows there's no such voodoo. You don't believe in it, do you? No. No, not unless I see it working. Expense account item two. $148.70, Hartford to Port-au-Prince via airplane. Expense account item three, $32.50, tropical clothes. And item four, 25 bucks spent while I browsed the waterfront bars in Port-au-Prince, looking for somebody who knew where the Gordon yacht was moored. When I found him, he not only knew that, he knew everything. Hey, it don't matter what, what you want to know about this blasted island. Ask me first. My name is Cap Regan, and I've been here since before repeal. Give up my citizenship, I did, with the help of a couple of prohibition agents. <laughs> and I figure on sailing out my final days right here. Yeah, what do you want with the Gordon Craft? I want to see the owner, Ralph Gordon. How do I get to it? I reckon you pay me to row you out to her. My dinghy's down to the foot of the pier, just a short hail from where we're at. Well, good. Come on, let's shove off. Just sweet till I down my ration here. Yeah. Yeah, that'll... Put me in ship shape. Yeah, what'd you say you wanted with that schooner? Yeah, figuring on buying her? Oh, thank you for the compliment. If I bought a boat today, it'd have to be a surplus life raft. I told you I want to talk to Gordon. A friendly visit to all the other kind. Uh-huh. I'm beginning to see how you know so much about this island. Well, never question, never learn. Remember that, Sonny. And this way, we veer off to starboard. Yes, sir. Never question, never learn. Look, I'm an insurance investigator. A company sent me down here to look things over, including Gordon. 
up the road. I don't know yet. What do you know about it? They're a jug full, sonny, a jug full. Stood into the harbor about two months back. No sooner dropped his hook than his crew started taking the pier head leap. Everybody jumped for the bosun uh, for reasons of his own. What was the matter with Gordon? He was off seas over all the time. And you navigate with sextant, a compass, and parallel ruler, sonny, not with a double shot and a water chaser. Get the drift? They were afraid to sail with him? Oh, that's the line of it. If you'd ever pile into a reef, you feel the same. Oh, yeah, here we are. And there's my dinghy down at the bottom of the ladder. And there's Gordon's yacht out there, you see? The tug is passing astern of her now. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of boat. Yeah, she carries a suit of sail like a grind clipper. Oh, why don't you see her close up? <laughs> She's dirty as a garbage skull. All right, give her a hail now, Sonny. We're close enough. Hey! Anybody aboard? Hey, aboard the yacht, anyone home? Yes? What do you want? If the ship was dirty, I didn't notice. It may have had good lines too, but it couldn't have touched what stood still at the rail, wearing clam diggers, an off-the-shoulder T-shirt, and a Caribbean tan. There's a trimble for you. That'll be his wife. Can I come aboard? Who are you? What do you want? I'm Johnny Dollar from Hartford. I want to talk to Ralph. Oh. Why, yes, then. I guess you'll have to come aboard. Yeah. Oh, swing the stern into the ladder. There you be. We're steady now. Okay, Cap. You wait for me, huh? Well, how are things in Ralphie's old hometown? Cool, but not as cool as this, uh, this reception. Don't let it throw you. What is this, a friendly drop-in business or just plain snooping? It's the last I met Weena, the wife they haven't heard about at home. Congratulations. Now I know why you like the way your shoulders bear. The better to keep a chip on them. If you're through being sharp, I'll let you hear what's left of my husband. Come on, through here. Hey, Ralph. You got a visitor from Hartford. Get away from this cabin. You gold-digging little churches, you take your visitor, would you? Well, there you are, chum. He's got the door locked. It'll stay that way till he runs out of wine. You heard enough? Yes, enough to know how you acquired your charming attitude. Forget it. I walked into it with my eyes wide open. Let's get back out on deck. The light's better for throwing barbs at each other. Sure. Sounds like fun. Well, do I have to help you off the boat? Not until you help me by answering some questions. I'm an insurance investigator. I was sent down here by the company that holds a policy on your husband's life. What should I do? Faint? The story they got was that Ralph was dying from some kind of a voodoo curse. They don't believe it, and neither do I. Why not? It might be true. Hmm? Oh, some old guy, they call him Papa Luau, came out to the boat. He yelled some things at Ralph, and when Ralphie threw a bottle at him, he swore he'd put a curse on him. Hey, how did they hear about it back in Hartford? Ralph's brother, Dr. Thomas Gordon, told them. You know him? Yeah, we hate each other. I wonder why he'd tell them. Well, maybe because he thought somebody who'd be better off with Ralph dead was using Papa Luau's curse as a cover-up. How would you stand as his widow? Get off this boat. Get off. What's the trouble, Eddie? Oh, Em. Yeah, come here, will you? Who's the boarding party? Just get him off, Em. Sure, honey. Well, mate. Do you walk in or dive? Save your strength for the last scene, Goliath. I was just leaving. <laughs> Expense account item five, three dollars paid to Cap Reagan as water taxi fare. Item six, 80 cents, land taxi fare to Hotel Francois. An up at the heels hangout for not only the best in tourists, but also Brother Thomas Gordon, MD. Uh, please make yourself comfortable. Could I offer you something? Nothing but some brotherly advice. Certainly. I feel like a stupid fool for not being able to handle this thing myself. So now that you're here, call on me for anything. First, have you seen Ralph? I tried to, but he locked himself in his cabin. Uh, tell me, as a medical man, how do you digest this voodoo curse story? 
Why, it's ridiculous. Good heavens, this is the 20th century. I do think that science doesn't know everything it would like to know. Voodoo, black magic. There are stories, supposedly true, but any victim would have to have a highly susceptible mind. And I know my brother, Mr. Dollar. His mind is susceptible only to his own whims and fancies. And what's the matter with him? That's it, I don't know. He's drawn within himself and seems to be searching almost insanely for escape through alcohol. Hasn't anybody thought of putting him on the wagon? It's a horrible idea, but it works. I don't think this is the time for it. He's suffering mentally and needs release. Well, that leaves us only one thing to think about, and no matter how thin you cut it, it's still voodoo. I'm a man of science, Mr. Dollar. I'd make hypocrisy out of all my knowledge and training if I attacked the problem from that direction. But, uh... Please let me know what you find. Expense account item seven, four dollars, rental of horse and cart, in which my walking tourist guide, Cap Riggan, and I jolted out of town in search of Papa Loire. Something made me feel like I was riding my last mile in a tumbrel en route to the guillotine. The moonlight was fighting a losing battle against an army of storm clouds that was sweeping in. And then to make it worse, I heard a drum. Hear that, Sonny? Yeah, sort of a tired Gene Krupa. Means we're getting close to Papa's quarters. Is he the only one around here? Yep, none of the good Elgins performs in his territory. <laughs> He's too mean. Oh, great. And that ain't no galley news, it's the truth. I tell you, there's lots of black magic, as so-called. It's nothing but tourist bait. But Papa, he's a genuine article. Let me tell you about one fella he loaded a curse on to. He was a knight of him before he got through with him. Cap, Cap, please, you keep your mind on your driving, and I'll keep mine on pleasant memories. Well, I ain't got no more driving to think about. What's the matter? That's the path over there by that gnarled old tree. From here on, you plot your own course. This is close enough for me. Me too. Say, wait a minute. Say, how do I know I can't put a curse on him, huh? I never tried. Smooth silence, Sonny. The path led along the edge of a field of sugar cane, and on the other side of me was a solid wall of jungle. First, I smelled some feathers burning. Then I heard the chant. There was a door in the wall of jungle that led to a small clearing, and before the moon was smothered by another cloud, I saw a shack. Smoke curled out through an open door, and I could see the glow of a fire on the floor inside. Hey, Papa! I want to talk to you. Who is come to the house of Poplua? Well, my name wouldn't mean anything to you, but what I have to say will. Can I come in? Entre. What are these words of so great importance as you wish to interrupt, Poplua? All I know about voodoo is that I don't believe it. Legba. Legba. I've come to you because I haven't got any answers from anybody else. I want to know what's behind this so-called curse you put on Ralph Gordon. You not believe. You like me make you believe. Ralph Gordon, he die tonight in the wind and rain. And for you, I have magic now. See my fire? You will believe the smoke. Now, believe. <coughs> <coughs> I couldn't see what he'd thrown onto the fire. He'd reached behind him for it. But when the smoke from it whirled around me, it seemed to grab my throat and squeeze. I stumbled back through the door. I hadn't believed in voodoo when I'd come in. But going out, I wasn't so sure. <laughs> return to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. CBS invites you to hear one of the greatest ad-libbers in show business, Groucho Marx, this Wednesday night on most of these same CBS stations. Groucho's show, You Bet Your Life, finds the master throwing quips and questions at oddly assorted pairs of contestants. And it's one of the funniest, fastest, merriest shows on the air. Be listening when Groucho Marx comes along this Wednesday on CBS. <laughs> 
And now with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> My throat burned. I staggered around in the heavy jungle air, and when I could breathe again, I gulped in enough to lift the Graf Zeppelin. When I got back into the shack, he was gone. He hadn't left much of what he'd smoked me out with, but he'd left enough. A few shreds of photographic film on the dirt floor, and film made of cellulose and nitrates not only takes pictures, it puts out nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide when it's burned, a combination that would live up to the demands of any gas chamber. We headed back to the yacht, and this time I boarded without a hail. that makes any difference. Maybe you're in too deep to back out. How would you like it if I spilled the whole thing? Oh, what difference does it make? It'd be better than landing in a Haitian prison with your motive showing. Then get over, Angel. I'll be in my sack when you make up your mind. And how wrong you can be. See you later, huh? What are you doing on this ship? Get off. Oh, no. Not after that intriguing conversation I just heard. How much did you hear? If I added it to the gas assault Papa Luau threw at me, it'd be enough to nail you and Loverboy here for conspiracy to commit murder. I don't know what you're talking the about. The point is, I know what you two were talking about. Listen to me. You've got to believe me. I don't have to betray me anyway. I... I admit that Em and I... Well, I did get involved with him. It was because Ralph turned into another man after we were married. This probably marks the first time in history that an icicle melted in Port-au-Prince. Please, let me finish. When my marriage went to pieces, I had to do something or go crazy. To see Ralph drinking up all the champagne on the island was just more than I could take. I was going to divorce him and leave with him, but, but we weren't going to murder him. You know, chapter one has so many holes in it, it could have been printed by a punch press. You don't worry about landing in prison with your motive showing when all you're planning is, is divorce. You do when people are waiting for your husband to die under mysterious circumstances. That's why I was trying to make him go away. If Ralph died, who would look any farther than the erring wife? Unless Em was hiding something. <clears throat> Can you lock this cabin from the outside? Yes. What are you going to do? You aren't going to lock me in here? No, just your playmate. You're coming with me. Where? To Papa Loaz. I want to hear what kind of a story you tell in front of him. Are you... You don't believe me? No. With 150000 at stake, I don't even believe myself. Well, there's a shack. You go in first. It may not be heroic, but it's the best way I can think of to catch his reaction when he sees it. Come on, go ahead. Go on in. Come to Papua's door. Who are you, woman? Well, Mr. Dollar, are you satisfied? Not quite. And you did not believe. Why you are here? You wish again to see the power of my smoke? Let's just drop the act, Papa. I know what you're throwing in the fire. What's my book called smoke? You not yet believe. A good man from a police laboratory can sift enough out of those ashes to know it was film. What is this you say? I say that I've got enough on you, you old fake, to put you in the local pokey. Who oh, dare speak Dutch to Papua? And that's where you're going to go if you don't cooperate. Now, that's a promise. What is it you want? Did somebody put you up to this cursed business that Ralph Gordon is supposed to be under? A man of your race. Now go. That is all. It's not enough. What was his name? I not know the name. What did he look like then? My eyes were closed. And uh, that's. Come on. I'm taking you into town if I have to drag you by the hair. No, no, don't touch me. I will tell you how this is. It is true. I do not know the name or the face. He come to me. 
He ask me when comes next to rain and wind. I tell him last night. But is tonight. The storm come with the seat. He tell me he needs storm to close portals in the ship. He say, if I bring this curse, I will be best to gun on Haiti because it kill white man. That is difficult. That is all. Now you go. How about the film for the fire? Did he give it to you? That is true, not long before you come. Well, get rid of it, Papa, before you lose your license to operate. You go now. Pablo will be alone. Go now. All right, Mrs. Gordon, all right. Let's not stay for the music. Could you make head or tail of what he said? What goes into your husband's cabin? Nothing but food and wine. Mostly wine. Who fixes his meals? I do. Our cook left us. Yeah? Where does the wine come from? You said it was champagne, didn't you? Yes. It always comes from the same place, a liquor shop in town, a case at a time. <laughs> Nothing makes any sense. What are you going to do? All I can do, try every angle. But that's not all I'm going to try in that liquor shop. Expense account item 8, 450, two quarts of rum, the purchase of which helped loosen the tongue of the proprietor who had been supplying Ralph Gordon's champagne. And the words that poured out weren't exactly intoxicating, but they sent me staggering to the nearest phone. Yes, hello. Dr. Gordon, this is Dollar. Good heavens, Dollar. I've been wondering about you. What have you learned? Well, first tell me this. What would happen to a man if he was in a ship's cabin on a stormy night with all the portholes closed and there was a lot of dry ice in there with him? What? What was that? A small room, no ventilation, a lot of dry ice. A lush maybe passed out. What would happen? Good Lord. Dry ice is solidified carbon dioxide. If enough of it evaporated into the room... A lush would not be bothered by a hangover the next morning because he wouldn't wake up, right? Exactly. The gas, although not toxic, would force the oxygen from the atmosphere, and the result would be asphyxia. What are you getting at, Dollar? Well, that curse your brother is suffering from is very scientific. The champagne he's been getting has been chilled by dry ice, about five pounds per case. One went out just before the storm broke. Good Lord. Uh, it may be just coincidence, but Ralph's wife and that bosun... Yeah, I know. For a bosun, he'd make a very good chemist. They sent for a pull motor. If it's too late for your brother, maybe I can use it. Hey, Cap, Cap, come on, come on, will you? Over a hoy, sonny. Set up around, George, for my shipmate and me. This is rum weather, sonny. Never mind around, <laughs> Cap. you got to row me out of that yacht again. What? In this weather? I wouldn't ask old Neptune himself to set out on a night like this. Come on, come on, Cap. I'm in a hurry. Here, here's 20 bucks. I want time off the horn. Oh, what did you say? <laughs> I didn't think it could rain any harder than it had been, but it did. Visibility was zero. But about 20 minutes out, Cap spotted her riding lights. There she lies, sonny. We were on target, but so was somebody else. A searchlight stabbed out at us. Hey, this sounds like prohibition days. Who's giving us the broadside? I can't tell. I'll lay a pelican hook over his head if I get my hands on him. Oh, Cap! Uh, I got my left leg. Uh, get down the bottom, Cap. I'm going over the side. There was nothing to do but swim, so I swam. I tried to remember how many shots had been fired, and that's where I made my mistake. There was a lull in the shooting, which I took to mean that the gun was empty, so I thrashed my way to the ladder. But when I got there, the first thing I saw after I'd shaken the water out of my eyes was the muzzle of a rifle. The face looking down the barrel at me belonged to brother Thomas Gordon, M.D. Sorry, Dollar. Killing you wasn't in my plan. But now it'll have to be done. I was waiting for a bullet to come my way, but instead the doctor did. Are you all right, Dollar? I'll thank you later for spoiling his aim. Yeah, forget it. That's me, big-hearted M. 
Out. Say, get a boat hook on the doctor. He's our prize fish. Don't let him get away. I grabbed a fire axe out of its case on my way to Ralph Gordon's cabin. If it needed ventilating, I knew one quick way to do it. I didn't check for oxygen. I took a deep breath, held it, and went in. The cabin was littered with wine bottles, and in one corner, in an open case, was the dry ice that was in the process of cooling Gordon off for good. He was stretched out on his bunk. I hefted him to my shoulder and used the last of my breath getting him out of there. What's the matter with him? Come on, help me to get him stretched out. Right. Come on, give me a hand, will you? Yeah. Maybe we can save a policyholder. All right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Expense account item nine, thirty dollars. Cover charge at a hospital where I put the revived Gordon under the care of a doctor, not his brother. His brother happened to be resting in a jail cell at the time, waiting the formal charge of attempted murder. Motive, the family fortune. Item 10, same as item 9. Same hospital where they patched up Cap Regan. Item 11, $40. An ounce of voodoo perfume for the lovely but sometimes chilly Edwina. Maybe if she tries that kind of magic on her husband, he'll spend less time with the bottle joy and more with her kind. An expense account item 12, $148.70, return trip to Hartford. Expense account total, $424.70. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd and David Ellis with music composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Edmund O'Brien may soon be seen in the Columbia picture, 7-Eleven Ocean Drive. Featured in tonight's cast were Earl Lee, Willard Waterman, Ted DeCorsia, Charlotte Lawrence, Lou Krugman, Byron Kane, Dick Ryan, and Clayton Post. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. Join us next week at the same time when, from Hollywood, Edmund O'Brien returns in another transcribed adventure of... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. There'll be a bright new show on CBS this Wednesday night. It's called The ABCs of Music, and the star is Robert Q. Lewis with Ralph Flanagan's Orchestra. You'll find Robert Q. and Ralph Flanagan taking over while Bing Crosby is on vacation. So join them on most of these same CBS stations this Wednesday for The ABCs of Music. Beginning next week, yours truly, Johnny Dollar, will be heard at this same time on Thursday nights. Thursday nights for Johnny Dollar. This is CBS, where you hear suspense every Thursday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System.